Final hour overdrive continues. Brought to you by FanDuel. Bringing you everything from the opening line to the final score. Our best bets brought to you by FanDuel later in the hour. Our friend Clara Hanna will join us as well. She's out in Vancouver ahead of the uh, Canada-Australia match. Christine Sinclair playing in her final match for Canada. So um, Claire's been out there all week, and we'll get her take on the buildup, what we can expect tonight. Um, it's going to be, I'm sure, an emotional night. So Claire's coming up later this hour, and Keegan Matheson will join us here in a few moments from MLB.com. The winter meetings continue in Nashville. Keegan is down there. And we've talked a lot about Shohei Otani the last couple of days. A little bit about Juan Soto, not nearly as much. And, um, you know. I think, think Keegan's at Tootsie's just getting reports yeah. on what's going on. I hope so. He seems like a guy that would be very fond of a place like that. That's what I'd be doing. Yeah, that's... Could, why, why would you be standing in the lobby of a hotel? Yeah, but what if mm-hmm. you're going... buckled and Otani signs in Toronto <laughs> and you show up and you just face plant in front of John Schneider and Ross it'd be, Atkins? It'd be awesome. <laughs> it's like you're just yeah. like, okay, it's not happening tonight, and you put in an absolute shift at Tootsie's, wow. and you get what's... a call over and you're mangled. <laughs> what's what's worse? You're, you're, you're mangled or a guy who, who – crapped himself in a scrum yesterday i mean really you Mm. know like there it is right like sometimes you just enjoy yourself (laughs) i don't we can't play that drop you can't really hear it properly it's just so loud the fart yeah the the fart i think that was a tampa bay lightning (laughs) situation i guess it's somewhat there but i think that would actually be that's old school journalism man that would have been the case back in the day like media types they'd they'd put in their hour or two and then just say i'm going to the bar and i you know if news breaks whatever i'll see it tomorrow don't kid yourself media types like to get after it Mm -hmm. like when i first started in the business they loved having like they finished their piece and there's like a glass of scotch little shout out to their own piece saying done for the evening Mm -hmm. and then it's look out oh yeah man well now everything's instantaneous right so now you have to be online. You, you have to be prepared yeah. to have an answer on Twitter mm-hmm. or on Instagram or TikTok or, you know, you're going up immediately online or a web or YouTube or whatever, where you're like, if you're a newspaper guy 40 years ago, it didn't matter when something broke. You, you're writing about it the next day. Yeah. But you could be at Tootsie's until four in the morning. It didn't make a difference. Now it's kind of of a tough explanation if you miss the Otani signing because you're (laughs) (laughs) requesting chicken fried. Yeah, you're two stepping on the dance floor. That would be hysterical. I I want like see I you you die to hear those stories like if there was, but there's no throwbacks. Nowadays they're playing trivia and doing Uh whatever. Like they're not like you're in Nashville. You better enjoy country music, live music, and and beers and and. Uh, if you drink, I, I mean, and and go after it I instead agree, of yeah. not enjoying Broadway. That's I think ridiculous. it'd be hilarious, like just a, yeah. an impromptu scroll. Ross, what were you thinking? <laughs> 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 that would be the best. I'll tell you what, if Ross Atkins lands on, Ross will be right beside you at Tootsie's about an exactly. hour after the presser. Oh, yeah. They will be absolutely doing a jig down Broadway, man. They will yeah. be dancing their asses off down I there. think Mac T said when they won the lottery with McDavid, which I think it was kind of out of the blue, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. They yeah. were literally jumping up and down the hallways back in Edmonton yeah. celebrating the fact they got this guy. Well, remember yeah. the uh, the draft lottery in the NBA where it was either the owner or the president of the Spurs. He just started yelling. <laughs> like and everyone else was so rattled and quiet and when the Spurs came up like the last team obviously to come up and get the first overall pick and they knew they were getting Wemba Nyama the guy he couldn't control himself in a crowd full of his contemporaries right like in, yeah. like he was around NBA loyalty and the commissioners in there and the owners are in there and this guy just starts yelling and they're because he was so happy ass handed they to suck them yeah. whole oh, pop God. like his pop have anything else what else, what else is Pop going to try to, you know, Pop, how about Pop up? gets on the mic and explains why they suck still? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, guys, we're not that good this year. Can you please yeah. leave Stop us alone? Running. That's yeah. not who we are. That's, That's the amazing thing. That would actually have been better if Pop got on and said, why are you booing the opposition? We stink. Yeah. Boo us. Yeah. We're 3-16. and 16. <laughs> That's worthy of jumping on the microphone, right? Have you been watching us play? Why aren't you booing us? Forget everybody yeah. else. <laughs> All right, um, let's get to the bottom of this. You know, what, what life is like down in Nashville right now because we're all waiting for the Otani news. 
Once that happens, the Soto news could come out relatively quickly as well. Let's head down Let's to ask Nashville. Keegan. Let's ask Keegan how dangerous it would be to just get torched at Tootsie's <laughs> right now. <laughs> All right, here's MLB.com Blue Jay reporter. Keegan, are you willing to put your career on the line and absolutely floor it on Broadway tonight in case Otani signs with the Jays? Hey, you know, that's really the most dangerous question of my career that I face day to day as a man. Yeah, I, I will. Uh, what's the vaguest way I can say this? There was a moment around 11 p.m. last night when it was reported that Shohei had visited Dunedin where I said, "Uh oh, <laughs> we'd better downshift. We'd better pop it back into fourth gear. <laughs> wow. That's got to be terrifying. That's where Twitter is the best and the worst, because on one side, it's like, all right, we got some news here. And I guess now we know we better, we better be prepared. Yeah. But if it didn't exist, you could have just said, hey, my night is done, man. I'll see you tomorrow. What's happening tonight? Like, what's the timeline where you say, I'm retiring for the evening and I am going to just put the pedal down? Yeah, there's got to be that cutoff time where I can say that realistically and believably I am asleep. Uh, I'll probably have to try to behave myself tonight, guys. Uh, these, these contracts uh, never tend to come at 2 p.m. in the mm. afternoon. They, uh, they very often come at 11 p.m. and... Uh, you know, an hour later, I'm reading my own story to myself out loud saying, is this English? Does right. this make sense? But it's uh, at any hour. This is uh, it's officially to that point, guys, uh, where I am not trying to go out for dinner. Uh, I'm uh, you know, I, I even skipped a nap today. The dedication down here is incredible. Wow. So it's uh, it's getting to that point where clearly these teams are moving towards the finish line. When visits have happened, when you are narrowing it down to some clear finalists, the only thing that's left is a decision. Now, Shohei Otani can take his sweet time if he wants to, but there's only one part of this left. There's not much left to learn. Keegan, like, are you just – how long are you staying there? I mean, like, I think it might happen tonight for some reason, but if it doesn't, like, when do you come back to Toronto? That's a great question. Now, right, right now I'm booked to fly back tomorrow evening. So if you can uh, get hour-by-hour odds on when this will happen, maybe between 6 and 11 when I'm flying tomorrow night would be a a good place to start. It's uh, one of those decisions where whatever you do will be wrong. It'll happen when you're in the air, when you're moving. But uh, so far, the official media business that we do here ends tomorrow. We'll do a couple of more interviews tomorrow, and everyone heads their separate ways. But uh, that could change, (laughs) I think, at any moment. Do you have a gut instinct? I mean, have you, you, I'm sure you talk to a lot of people down there. There's rumblings, obviously reading people on Twitter, differing opinions. Do you have any gut instinct of how this will sway? Or do you, I'll put it this way, do you genuinely believe that Shohei could be a Toronto Blue Jay? I do. Very genuinely believe that. I, I think they are seriously in this. I think they are a finalist for Shohei Otani, which is a wild sentence to say. But when you are getting to this point, uh, logistically putting this together and logically putting it together, I think when you are touring a facility, and listen, fellas, we talk each spring when I spend 45 days in Clearwater, Florida, you don't go to Clearwater, Florida unless there's a chance of getting paid or or having a good time. And for Shohei Otani to spend a day there touring around, it's serious. They are in that. Now, what makes this so interesting is that Shohei Otani is one of the most secretive athletes on earth. That's how his whole thing works, which is why part of me says right up until the end, I'm typically not a mystery team, surprise team guy. If there is anyone who that'll happen with, it's Shohei Otani, who values that privacy, the secrecy, and the silence of it all. That's why when Dave Roberts said today, yeah, we met with him, that was shocking. But the Blue Jays are in this. This is legitimate. They are going for it. And at this point, I think their part of the effort is close to over. They, they've clearly delivered what they think is the sales pitch. Yeah, and the, generally the three pillars for any free agent is it's money, it's can I win, and it's lifestyle, right? Um, yep. So what do you think – Let's take that one by one, starting with money. Do you have any reason to believe, Keegan, the Jays will not pay every possible penny that any other team in baseball would? They've got no reason not to. That ownership group has cash. We know how that works. Um, now, how much do you want to spend? Hey, you know, does it reach $600 million? It could. I don't think money 
is going to be the issue here, especially when you consider, my goodness, the audience that you can bring in, the incredible Japanese baseball fans this can bring in, what it can do to attendance. And you know what? If you're trying to sell some really expensive new seats that you're in the middle of building right now, what better way to do it? So from a business standpoint, I think it's an easy case. Well, you know, to further that, like, this will be unprecedented. I mean, really, you know, some people are linking a comparison to when they signed Clemens in the late 90s, and that was obviously very significant. But I don't think it is even close to what this would be. I like, don't either. No. This is next level. This man. is completely next level. Like, I'm curious if you've heard anything or if you have any projections on, like, if they sign them, the ticket packages that immediately go out, and, like, do they immediately try to lock new season ticket holders in for, like, five years, ten years? Like, I, I would imagine they're once they give him the money, they're immediately going to try to make a fortune off of him. Oh, absolutely. If you're on a season ticket list and you haven't done that yet, you're getting a call the moment the Shohei Otani signs. Right. Nothing will get cheaper. And like you said, probably committing a longer term to those seats because, yes, pouring $300 million into the stadium – you do it for a reason, and one of those reasons is you think you can make that money back. And whether that comes through TV rights, through tickets, through suite rentals, through merchandise, you are unlocking a completely different world. And, guys, where it strikes me so often is within the media world. Sometimes when I'm on the road, it's me and one other reporter on the road covering the Blue Jays. Shohei Otani on the road we'll have 25 or 30 reporters covering just him from Japan. It is absolutely incredible. It's hard for me to wrap my mind around how big of a star he is. It, it does not compare to anyone else in Major League Baseball. Completely different stratosphere. Keegan, if he does come on board, and if you could fill in the blank, like if they got Otani, that would mean that's the end for any certain player. Or is he just coming on board and – it's like keep this band together, and then it's Otani as well. I think you keep the band together at that point. You try to add to it with a little bit of trade. I think the Blue Jays, if they get Otani, would go to the trade market next. I don't know if that would be as big as a Soto, but hitting the trade market where they have some chips to move. This year, guys, Otani's your DH. He's recovering from that elbow surgery he can hit. But you have Vladdy at first. You slide in Otani as the DH for 160 games. You're happy. A year from now, you say Kikuchi's a free agent. You'll have a couple spots open in the rotation. You slide Otani right back in. Everything orbits around him if you do get Shohei Otani. And I don't think there would be any awkward fits there. If he was a first baseman playing defensively every day, sure, you've got to figure out reps and do something. But it's a pretty seamless fit. You'd make the fit work no matter what, but I don't even think it really comes with a headache position-wise, baseball-wise. With Keegan Mathis and MLB.com, again, the winter meetings continuing down in Nashville. Um, are you sensing frustration from everyone else in baseball um, that, you know, the league uh, effectively is on pause now until Otani makes a decision? And if there's only two or three teams that are really in on him, that means there's like 27 other teams that just want to start working and they can't necessarily until Otani actually signs. Yeah, there, there is a weird buzz of frustration with that. Um, and, hey, for me, I find this fascinating. Um, it's easy when I walk into work every day. I'm going to write about Shohei Otani. Mm -hmm. I don't care if this goes 50 more days. No problem. But other teams, of course, want to get business started. I think that will happen very quickly. Because if you're the Blue Jays, for example, of course you have plan B. Juan Soto, Cody Bellinger, down the list. You're having to say to those agents, hey, we, give me a day. Let's wait on this. Let's wait on this. When that dam bursts, I think it will happen very quickly. But you're looking at Shohei Otani. Then it'll happen a couple of more times. Juan Soto, you look at Yamamoto at the top of that uh, pitching market as well. There's a couple of really big fish that aren't even Shohei Otani here that have to happen first. Uh, the the MLB offseason guys, my God, I wish we did it like hockey, and it was a big burst on mm -hmm. one day. It, uh, it tends to drag out and drag out like this, which people don't love. But, uh, man, oh, man, it's, it's like a, a soccer game with a late goal. You know, whenever that Otani news drops, it is going to be amazing. Ooh, man, I'm with you. Like, and, and from a Blue Jay perspective, I said it a couple of hours ago, until he goes somewhere else, he's still in the running to come here, right, which keeps the dream alive because 
you're aware of it, Keegan. You, you're dealing with fans all the time. Like, people are jacked right now to the point where I think this market is actually really well prepared for heartbreak because we've been down this road before, right? <laughs> like, we're, we've, we've seen it before with Kawhi, with other teams, with the Blue Jays. So I actually don't think it's going to be that, like, depressing afterwards. Um, but even with that history and with that said, you know, it's, it's pretty incredible buildup here. Um, and the Jays are abiding by the rules. And I guess, you know, Dave Roberts, the manager of the Dodgers, did not abide by those rules. That, you know, he came out and admitted that they had spoken with Otani. And I guess their GM, Dodgers GM, came out and was not happy with that. I mean, that would have caused, I would guess, a pretty significant stir. The idea that the Dave GM Roberts... said, we don't talk <laughs> about free agents. Yeah. And old Davey boy, maybe he had a couple of glass of scotch or something. Because <laughs> he was going in-depth. Spitballing. Yeah. 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 Dave Roberts approached that like a human being would, you know, not like right. a front office exec, which is a, a different type. Uh, he, he said, hey, it's going to come out eventually. Let's just be honest. Whereas <laughs> Ross Atkins said, let, let, let me read you this master class. There's some incredible amount of energy, an amount of buzz in the game around several potential opportunities, mm -hmm. one that is historic potentially. That's how you do it. Ross Atkins was born for this game, baby. Yeah, he owns it, man. And Ross, <laughs> I just wonder, like, what Ross Atkins is going to look like if they sign Otani. Like, will he be at the forefront? Will Shapiro, will the owner? Like, the owner will be kicking around. I guarantee you that. Oh, yeah. The owner will get involved for sure if Otani's coming up here. But, like, is this, is this Atkins and his dance? Is it Shapiro's dance? Like, how do we decipher between the two? On the baseball side, you know, certainly I point to Atkins and the, the baseball ops, the, the baseball guys working on this. But more than any deal in franchise history, probably more than any deal in Toronto sports history, I think quite easily, this is involving Shapiro at the president's CEO level. And it's, invi it's including ownership, not just in a, you know, hey, can we spend $100 million? It's including them through negotiations because you're talking about half a billion dollars. I mean, think of the the thought that the average person puts into buying a car, buying a condo, multiply that by a million. Like, this is such a huge decision for that business and, and this entire property. You know, you have to take the baseball out of it and kind of de-romanticize it from their end. They will be involved, ownership level and all of that. And if it does come a time to do a victory lap, uh, there will be a lot of cars on that track. Yeah, it's a fascinating process, man, because, again, the guy, he's very private. You know, he's obviously yeah. soft-spoken. There's an interpreter involved all the time. Like, it's just going to be a different press conference wherever he goes. You know, it's, it's ownership is going to spend more money than maybe any other owner in history on an individual player, yet it's going to be understood, like, this guy's not doing the rounds for you. You know, like, he's not, he's not, he's not parading down Young Street or parading no. down Sunset or, you know, whatever it is. He's just going to go to work, and I'll see you in the spring. Keegan, I got to ask you before man. we get you out of here, like what if you did blow off some steam and thought it was closed case for the evening and you just put on a clinic and then you had to put something together? Like what would you do? You know what? That's when you draw on experience, you know. That's, uh, <laughs> that, that's, that, that's when I, uh, I, you know, I, I lean on all that work I put in all off season to get in the, the best shape of my life. We're not talking about <laughs> cardiovascular shape here. We're talking about the reps over the years of uh, some of those late breaking, uh, less important trades and deals. And that's when you, uh, you know, send a note to a good friend and say, can you read this for me and tell me if it makes any sense? There you go. Yeah. You need a proofread, man. Every once in a while, you need a proofreader. There's nothing wrong with that. That is a veteran move. Uh, he is Keegan Matheson of MLB.com. Enjoy your time down there, Keegan. We'll do it again soon. Thank you. You got it, guys. Take care. Yeah. That's, uh, there's gotta be a lot of people down in Nashville thinking, how do I pull this off? Because... How do I write it and have it buttoned up mm -hmm. regardless? Yeah. Cause... Hit send. It's got to be terrifying for people that are just getting after it and someone walks. Because you can't, you know, like Keegan made the comment, you know, it, it is reasonable to expect people are asleep. 
But if they're doing a press conference and you're crawling in the background trying to oh, get dude. through the hallway. Six remember, Bush like, Light, six Bud Light, and yeah. I love them, tall boys. Remember you know, Dragger face at, like, the lockout where people yeah. were just, like, sitting around? Mm -hmm. Like, imagine if there was an emergency kind of, like, mini presser and you got to ask questions and you're just creamed. Like, wow. it would be a disaster. Yeah, you can't do it. You'd have here's to come up with an explanation. Here's something to think about, too. With Otani being so big in Japan, he might want to announce it like at a certain time in Japan. Right. So good point. I, I believe you know with the time change, it's like almost like a half a day or a full day ahead. I remember it being like seventeen hours ahead or something. Mm -hmm. So think of that. I, I used to when I was in Japan, I would call home like I would be taking a nap in the afternoon it'd be the, the next morning it would be the morning back home it was right. really weird like it was uh the time change was crazy so he might do something like that yes too, that throw everybody for a loop it's a 14 hour difference that's true if it's prime time like 7 p.m local in tokyo 5 a.m here and you had yourself an absolute yeah, yeah you're cross-eyed yeah <laughs> like you <laughs> you crawled into bed at 3 30 and you had to yeah. be up for a 5 a.m presser yeah. Good luck. You've got yeah. half a chicken parm sandy on your chest. Yeah, and asking yeah. questions. Journalism. <laughs> uh, anyway, speaking of journalism, Claire Hannah's been out there covering Christine Sinclair, the national team. They're in action against Australia tonight. She's coming up later in the hour. And don't forget TSN 1050's Leafs lineup. Your chance to win Leaf tickets every week all season long. Every weekday, we'll announce a current or former Maple Leaf player. And on Fridays, you'll have a chance to call in and name the Leaf lineup of the week. Name all the players in the lineup. You'll score a pair of tickets to an upcoming game. This week, we're giving away a pair of tickets to see the Leafs take on the Pittsburgh Penguins December 16th and throwing in a $250 Vanilla Visa prepaid card Ooh. with each pair of tickets to make it the ultimate game night. Vanilla Visa prepaid cards are available for purchase at Petro Canada. Today's player of the day, Patrick Marlowe. Patrick Marlowe oh, wow. is your player of the day. Um, Interesting. He played into his 40s. Right? He yep. was chasing good a record player. into his 40s. Um, yeah, good player. Mentor. Yep. Was a mentor, mentor for the young guys, too, yep. right? Yep, for sure. Patrick Marlowe. There you go. Your player of the day. All right, our best bet still to come. Claire Hanna coming up later in the hour. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on the TSN app. All right, we'll get to our best bets brought to you by Fandu a little bit later in the hour. Bunch of NHL games tonight. We've talked a lot about that in-season tournament. I don't know if you saw the end of that Indiana game last night, Pacers-Celtics, but it actually looked pretty electric. I don't know. Why, because yeah. Indy won? Yeah. I mean, and, and you know, people talk about the bench, and they want the money, and now they're going to Vegas, and they're going to get some money. And you got ball games in November and December where maybe players actually care, which is crazy to suggest that that was ever right. an issue and that that's why the NBA would do this because maybe the players don't care enough. But whatever will trigger a response from your fans and maybe people getting engaged, telling you if this works, and I don't know if it will, but if it does, the other leagues are going to follow suit. The NHL will do it. The NHL would be silly not to. Like, if, okay, if, what's the NHL's response? What are they going to paint their ice surfaces, Hayes? Well, that's probably not going to happen. But you, and I don't know if the NHL will have the same amount of money available. They got bigger rosters. You know, they don't generate as much money. But, you know, it's it's something where if this takes off, and I'm skeptical it will, don't get me wrong, I'm not, until they get to Vegas and they play the semis and the finals, we'll see what comes of that. But if Is it, the semis and the finals a one-shot deal? Like, it's just, you play the semis and then it's, there's... Yeah, there, there's the semis and then the final all within, I believe, the same week in Vegas. So the four teams are all going to be down there. And the finals features, it's like the 83rd game of the schedule. Like, two teams right. will play an 83rd game, and it's the final of the NBA Cup. But whoever wins it, every player gets 500 grand. Whoever loses, I believe, still gets like 250. It's not so bad. It's not bad. It's a lot of money. And, you know, everyone's trying to get to Vegas. Look at the NHL announced they're, they're taking the draft to the Sphere yeah. in Vegas, which... Yeah. I don't know. I think it'll be exciting. I mean, that sphere holds, I think, 18,000 people. Like, and they'll put a show on there. It's ridiculous. There's going to be other markets that are like, hello, like over here, can we have anything here? Can we have an all star game? Can mm. we do something? Can we yeah. have the awards? And it's, it's just like the players. It's going to be the haves and haves nots. Yeah. Like, 
eighteen thousand, they're not going to fill that for the draft. Like, how are they going to get eighteen thousand people in there to see the draft? I, I don't even, I don't even see how that's even possibly plausible. Um, well, I mean, I, I, what? How? What is the attendance at some of these drafts that we've been to? Like, I, it's not full. It's not, no, it's not eighteen thousand. No, it's like half a building, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. You know, well, and which mean, fine. You get eight, nine thousand, whatever. And I don't know. I just, I, I'm a little bit. I don't understand the infatuation with going to Vegas here. Where like this is the end of it. This is the end of the road before they decentralize the draft and everyone stays home. And the history of the draft was Montreal, Toronto. Um, you know, and now you're going to the Sphere, which I feel like they're just throwing a bone at James Dolan because Dolan owns it. And yeah. you know. I, I guess it'll well, be it'll Bill be... Foley will be right there in the middle too, your buddy. Right, might land on a helicopter right in the middle. He might, but but is it like being? It's not a Golden Knights event, though. I don't think. No, it just not. happens to be in Vegas at the Sphere. Yeah, I, I just, I mean, I think they as as you like Vegas does everything I on steroids. I it's going to be it'll be a spectacle. I'm telling you, people like. From what I understand, I've had a lot of friends that have gone to the Spear. You guys know my mm-hmm. buddy Joey works there. He said it's like nothing you've ever seen before. So they'll do it upright. Yep. It'll be an entertainment situation. It's Vegas. Nobody is not going to – like those managers and, and scouts and all that, can you imagine if this is the last time they're doing it, they're going to blow it out in Vegas? That's oh. impressive. Like think of that. That's a very good point. This will be the end. Like this is the party right. to send off all the drafts over the years and doing it in Vegas will be next level. But O makes a good point. Like Vegas has been in the league for how Seven many years, years now? Seven years. They've already had an all-star game. Now they're having a draft. Yeah, I get it. Um, they've had an outdoor game. They've had, had an outdoor game. Of, like they've, they've done a lot. And you're right. Other markets probably should get it. But, you know, it's, 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 it's a fair league, but it's not a fair league. We talk about it all the time. Why do the Leafs get to play on Saturday nights? Yep. Well, they they sell. They you sell. Know, like yep. Vegas sells. Like I know Carolina deserves more, and you know Arizona playing in the the college situation there, but they're playing well. Like is some Vegas of markets, outdoor game against Seattle? Is that their second one already? I thought they did. They not? I thought Vegas had an outdoor game against Colorado in Lake Tahoe. Because remember, it wasn't Petrangelo mic'd and when McKinnon was coming towards him. Oh, he was like, yeah, Holy that's right. Yeah. Like, this will be their second one. Yeah. yeah. So, and this like, one's in Seattle, I believe, the Winter Classic, right? Is it yeah. in Seattle, I believe? Um, it, and listen, those two, two teams, the two owners, they paid a fortune to get into the league. And you got to give it to them. And that's what yeah. a lot of it was. If you're going to pay a $600 million, $650, you're going to get this. You know, it's like in the NFL. If you build a new stadium, you get a Super Bowl. Like, it's kind oh. of understood. Think about uh, if they're talking expansion in the NHL at some point, they will again. That next number is a billion dollars, mm-hmm. like an absolute, you know, north. of what did Ann Lauer pay for it? Was it a billion? I think it was close. Eight yeah. something? Or yeah, like, I believe so. That that was uh, obviously by an Ottawa. You're right. And, and that seems like a foregone conclusion. And like if they go to 34, what's stopping them from 36 and 38 well, and 40? Like, did you, did you see today? Gary Bettman announced their revenue, six point two billion. Mm-hmm. Like it's creeping up there. It's doing well. Like uh, you know, the league is profitable sure. considering they they grinded it out during COVID. Like they lost so much money. Those mm-hmm. owners, you know, had to had to front a lot of cash. They were writing checks for guys' bonus. You know, like the 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 kids here at MLSE had to write big checks yeah. for Marner and Matthews, all those guys, and they had zero revenue from fans. Right. And now they weren't alone. Every, a lot of no, businesses around the did. world were, were did, suffering, yeah. clearly. But, yes, they, they skated through. They got through. It's back. The buildings are packed. People want to be entertained. People want to get back. Like that. Remember, that was a question. Like, are people going to return? Are people going to leave their house? Like, people are leaving. Right. People, there is life. We were all downtown on Saturday. So, like, downtown Toronto is buzzing again. Yeah. And I'm sure that applies everywhere else. I just I, – I, I mean, when you consider what's happened over our lifetime – you know, it went from we weren't around during the original six, but 12 teams. It was 21 for a long portion of our lives. Yeah. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it was like, all right, 23, 25. Tw- now they're at 32, and it's a foregone conclusion they're going to 34. Who's to say in 20 years there isn't 40 teams in the league? There, there and, might be based on cash. Like when I was drafted, that was San Jose was coming into the league. That yeah. was 91. 
and Patty Falloon, I think, was the first pick for them. Mm-hmm. He was it was the Lindros then Patty Falloon. Like that was, I think that was the twenty second team or the twenty third. Like yep. there was twenty one teams. Ottawa wasn't far that. behind. If they were, maybe they were already yeah. in, but I don't think they were far behind. And I just yeah. like at some point it's going to be too much and it's too watered down. And well, will the NFL ever get bigger? I uh, I mean the I, the belief is if they expand, it's like to, international. To yeah, yeah, it's like they're going to put four teams in Europe. They're just going to create another, basically another division. I think it's too watered down, the NHL already. Mm-hmm. I like the days where a third-line centerman got 35 goals and 80 points. That that yeah. happened in the late 90s, mm-hmm. in the 80s. Like, everyone was, like, I, I don't know. It just seems like you're you're getting six forwards, and then you're just filling in, and you're filling in. I don't know. I think it's watered down already. Yeah. Did well, we talk to – sorry to interrupt. Did we talk to Jonas or somebody with the numbers expected goals on 41 in the dead puck era? That's a good question. I we didn't do that homework. We should do that. We should yeah. have – send somebody, you know, one of our analytics. Maybe Mike Kelly would be able to do that for us. He works for Sport Logic. They'd probably be able to dig that up. But sure. With my luck, goals. it'll just be a minus. It'll be like, oh, <laughs> no. you only scored 30. <laughs> someone, no, did, did. someone did write yesterday, but I, I didn't like corroborate it. I didn't do the math. But someone said, like, the percentage of goals you scored for Carolina when you scored 41 was the equivalent of what McDavid scored for the Oilers last year and passed wow. an next score for the Bruins. In other words, like 63 goals in 23 was the equivalent of 41 in 2000 wow. or whatever whenever you scored it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think another thing that you got to remember here is if you are one of the current 32 teams in the NHL, if you know, expansion's coming, that means it's just going to get tougher to win. Like that doesn't come up enough that like using the Leafs as an example, the Leafs won in 1967, the next year it went to 12 teams. They haven't won since, you know, they've been, they've been chasing, uh uh-oh, more teams coming for a long time, and then it went to 12, 21, 25, Couldn't blah, they blah, have blah. picked one off at 12? <laughs> You'd think at 12 they could sneak one more in, right? Or at 21, sneak one in. But now it's like if you don't get one at 32, and then in two years it's 34, and then in 10 years it's 36, it's like at what point does it get – You know, it's just be, going to become increasingly more and more difficult Yeah. Mm-hmm. to win in this league. Like what well, a – like if you have 40 – like I can't even contemplate a 40-team league. No. Like, it just seems ridiculous, yet they're at 32. Like, it's, yeah. you know, what's an extra eight? T- you add eight more teams. It's like, all right, you know. I don't even think I would out. enjoy that. Like, if there's a 40-team league, I'd, yeah. it would just be like, how do you even track that? Well, you'd need a 24-team playoff. Like, immediately, you'd right. have to adjust your playoffs. It couldn't be 16 teams. And how the hell are you going to do that? Like, are That's, you going to have best of three? Like, it's I can't yeah. even think about that it. That is the weird goofy. thing, though. That, people do complain about, about that playoff format. The league has grown. The playoffs haven't changed, right? Mm-hmm. Like, the 16, now half the teams make. It used to be everyone made it except for, like, five. Right. You know, that's what was weird. Now it's it's it is hard to make the playoffs. That's why we keep saying, like, would you sign off on a playoff spot if you're a team that's, you know, in a really tough division or anything? Because mm-hmm. you just never know. Injuries, inconsistencies, another team gets hot. Like, it's just, that's why every game is under the microscope right now. Absolutely. Absolutely. Crazy. All right, we'll get to our best bets brought to you by FanDuel, and we'll head out to Vancouver. Christine Sinclair wrapping up her career tonight. Claire Hanna will join us to set the scene. We'll do that next. All right, we'll get to our best bets brought to you by FanDuel here in just a moment. Bunch of games in the NHL. NBA Raptors not in action again until tomorrow night. Kyle Lowry back in town. Miami Heat here tomorrow. And then the Leafs are in Ottawa on Thursday. I would assume our next guest will be back in Ottawa for that. For the, what are super we calling panel. it? The super panel. The super panel. The super yeah, panel, she, she yes. She might be there, yeah. She generally is running the show out there in Ottawa, but she's been out in Vancouver setting the scene for the match tonight. Canada, Australia, where we will see Christine Sinclair play for Canada for the last time. And here's our good friend, Claire Hanna. What's the vibe like leading up to a kickoff tonight, Claire? Well, we got a super panel happening here tonight, too. So, okay. <laughs> okay. We got a super panel happening on Thursday, but also here tonight. And... I don't know. I'm at BC Place. Well, hold on. Christine Sinclair Place. Mm-hmm. Correct me there. Um, walking up here, there's there's signs that are like, thank you, Sinclair. And then at breakfast, I see a lady sitting up. She's got a Sinclair jersey on. Like, the vibes right now in this city are amazing. And not to mention the fact that the Canucks are hosting. Um, they're hosting the Devils tonight. So that's going to be crazy. And these 
locations are both back to back, side by side. Um, but this has been an emotional week because the team really is trying to. I think they're in denial that Christine Sinclair is going to be leaving this team. They, nobody on this team has known the team without her because she's been here for 23 years. It's an incredible legacy, and for the younger players. You know, they're trying to soak up everything they can from a legend who is so exceptional at goal scoring. And then for some of the older veteran players, you know, they're realizing this is a changing of the guard. You know, Sophie Schmidt, this is also her last game with Canada. And those two have been together since 2007, I believe. So uh, there's, there was a huddle at the end of practice yesterday, which was the final practice and training session that Sinclair will ever participate in. And a couple of the players went around and just talked about what she meant to this program, not just on the field, but off of the field, what she's tried to do for gender equity and making this team and the program better than she found it. And Bev Friesman, the head coach, she came up and talked to us just after that. And she said, I'm a mess. You guys, I've, I've been crying. Like this is really emotional for me. And she's a coach. So I'm very interested to see how the team deals with their emotions throughout this game tonight. How has Christine been? Like, has she been emotional? Does she understand like the magnitude of this night, and how important it is for all Canadians and what she's done for the sport and young women all across the country? Well, she's so humble, and she hates talking about herself. She actually said that this atmosphere tonight, while she's grateful for it, she says this is her nightmare to have all the focus on her. Um, and here's the sense I get from her. I asked her has it hit her yet that this is her final match? And she said when she was packing in Portland, because that's where she plays professionally in the National Women's Soccer League for the Thorns, she said, okay, this is the last time I'm packing for a game with Canada, and it kind of hit her there. But then she mentioned when she walked into Christine Sinclair Place for their first training session on Sunday, and she looked up at the Jumbotron, which right now there's a 12 inside a maple leaf, and then it says CS Place. She said that's when it became real that this is going to be the location of her final match. Um, but emotionally, I'm very interested to see when it really hits her. And I, I, I expect that she's going to start tonight. Bev Priestman pretty much said that she's going to lead her team on for the final team or for the final match tonight. So I expect her to be in the starting 11. But whenever she's substituted out of this match, I have no idea how long we're going to have to pause for because to me, the ovation, I don't know if it will even end. And then think about after the game. You, you guys have all retired from sports. Like, how long does it take you to leave the ice, or in this case, the pitch? Because when you leave, you know you're not coming back on with this team. And in Toronto, when um, they were hosting the Olympic qualifier against Jamaica, that was back before she did the post with the cleats on Instagram, um, the cleats hanging. And I think a lot of people wondered if that was her final match because she had tears streaming down her face. She was walking around. BMO, like just signing so many autographs. And I think that was almost a sneak peek because at that point they hadn't announced this farewell to her. So, I mean, I think we could be here till one in the morning. Just with yeah. her signing autographs. <laughs> Truly, like, I, like it's going to be a late night. And I think that is probably the perfect play. Make, she's got to start. And then I, I would think she gets to halftime, probably comes back out for the second half. And, you, you know, you take her out for the 60th minute, 65th minute, something like that and allow her to have her moment. And to your point, Claire, I mean, there's no question the whole place will shut down. I'm sure both sides, including the Australians, will respect that. Um, but once she she does finish her career, once she does get out of there, I'm, I'm curious what you think her future is going to be with the program. Um, you know, she's the, the greatest player in the program's history, and it's not even close. Does, do you have any understanding of what kind of role she could play in the future with Canada? Yeah, she's been asked that question Bev's been asked that question. Um, here's my prediction. She's going to lay low for a little bit. Um, she's got, I think she's got a cabin on the Sunshine Coast. Um, I can see her spending some time there. Let's keep in mind, she doesn't have a contract yet next year with the Portland Thorns, but I think she wants to go back there. So that's going to be very interesting to keep an eye on. Does she continue for a season or more in Portland, or is this truly her final game? That one's really up in the air, but there's been talk of her returning as a coach. Um, maybe it's, you know, in terms of a shooting coach, maybe it's an assistant coach. Uh, Bev Friesman says it would just be a waste to not involve her at some point in the program because of her excellence. Like, yeah, the, she's the greatest goal scorer of all time. And as you said, it's not even close. And um, what well, is kind of close, Abby Wambach, I think was at 184, but I don't think anybody's going to break that record. I think that's just 
something that's really uh, unachievable at this point. Um, so, yeah, to not involve her in the program, I think it would be a disservice to Canada soccer. But I, I think it could take a bit for her to get back into it. Cause I think she just want to take some time off. I think she even joked she's never been to England just as a tourist and gotten to take in some, some Premier League soccer. So I could see her just kind of doing a little bit of a mm-hmm. a tour where she, she grabs some bevies, you know? She, sure. She just enjoys some of her teammates or former players she's been with and just, you know, kicks back and enjoys the game. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, It's going to be a fun one tonight. We look forward to seeing it all, of course, on TSN. Uh, Clara, we really appreciate you doing this. I know it's a busy time for you. So enjoy the match tonight and all the work out there, and uh, we'll do it again down the road. Yeah, thanks for having me, you guys. And we'll see you on the Super Panel on Thursday. Yes, Yes. the Super Panel on Thursday (laughs) in Ottawa. We'll we'll send you some photos from the Roxy later, too, okay? Yes, please do. That's a priority. (laughs) That's what we're talking about. (laughs) Thank you, Claire. Bye, guys. There's Claire Hanna. That's someone who Roxy. knows what's up in Vancouver. The Roxy will be cooking tonight. Absolutely, Ooh. man. It's you got a hockey game, a soccer game. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Maybe Sinclair will make her way over there. You never know. Mm-hmm. That would be quite the scene, right? You never yeah. know. Anything's possible. So, yeah, yeah. it's gonna be a fun one tonight. It'll be a that'll be buzzing in Vancouver, like she said. You got BC Place. You got uh, what is it Rogers Arena? I think in Vancouver, and yeah. Canucks plan, Canada plan. Now that I think about it, Noodles, I met you in Vancouver one night at a bar because the goal, your Kiprasov and Jerome were there, and I think you three were out together. Might have been. Yeah. <laughs> Possible you were there. Because I, I know those two were there, and I guarantee you would have been right with them. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me, unless I was, you know, on the management side. I thought, even though when I was coaching, I, I ended up there one night in a bad way. I, w- I shouldn't have been there. Like, you know, the coach, coach, coaches shouldn't cross over, right? But it was my first year out, so I was kind of still learning the ropes. But, uh... <laughs> still learning the ropes yeah. at the Roxy at three thirty in the you morning. Oh, it was yeah, it was five. It, we were it was downstairs. It wasn't even the bar yeah. wasn't open. It was the downstairs that was downstairs open. is the trouble zone. Yeah, that's the trouble zone. The cooler. And then you ended up. I ended up out in Abbotsford because uh, my buddy there. Right. He uh, he's got a place about forty five minutes out of town, which wasn't good. Mm-hmm. Anytime you end up out of town when you are, it's a late night, and you got to find your way back the yeah. next day. That's it was concerning. A show. Didn't That's well. concerning. Well, you learn the ropes. What are you gonna do? <laughs> it's all good. Uh, today's best bets powered by FanDuel. Make your picks and assemble a same game parlay in seconds on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. I'm going to play a couple of home dogs tonight, all right? I'm on Ottawa getting plus money against New York. They're going to win games. The Rangers have been great. Like, the Rangers have been great. You're getting plus money on the Sens, and you're getting plus money on the Sabres at home. Same thing. Two teams in the Atlantic. Patrick Kane not playing tonight. Like, I, I, is that a concern? Like, you know, the guy hasn't played. He signed last week. They were looking at I, Tuesday. Dude, I like, just give him trying. some time. I it's hear It's almost you, like but... maybe if they rack up a win, it buys them four days. Who knows? Anyway. But if he doesn't play this weekend, I'll be like, something's going on here. I haven't looked at their schedule. Yeah. I haven't looked at their schedule. Is, did they play tonight and then a break after type of thing? Like that's they might want to. They might have a date circled mm. of when he's playing, right? Like well, I think they were hopeful tonight because it's in Buffalo, right? He's going yeah. home, making his debut, and it's like, eh, he's just not quite ready yet. And it's like, e man, like yeah. not quite ready yet for a guy coming off major. Surgery, who's you know in his mid thirties, got to get up to speed though. Yeah. That, you you don't want to hit the ground and and like look bad. Yeah, you, no, you got to get I mean. it right, man. There's no yeah. there's no sense of screwing that up, Hazy. No, I listen. I totally agree with you, but again, and I don't know the reasoning behind it, obviously. But he, like he was waiting to sign, I presumed until he felt a hundred percent healthy, mm-hmm. right. and he's been training, and now he's he signed over a week ago. He's been there. Yeah, if like, he doesn't okay. play this weekend, I'd be like, maybe there's something goofy going on. Right. Yeah. Like, did they get him in practice? And it's like, man, he's not keeping up, you know, or something. Like, did something happen where you're like, man, this guy needs a little bit more time? I don't know. I mean, at some point, he's going he's gonna to play, clearly. And if yeah. you're Detroit, you know, their head's well above water. They played well. They're in the playoff spot right now. It, you don't want it to be a situation where you look desperate and it's like Kane's the only reason you're going to keep things on the rails. Yeah. You keep playing, and if he joins you, when he joins you, it's simply just a bonus. 
Um, yeah. But I'm on the Sens and Sabres tonight. Parlay that. It's paying plus 357. Today's best bets powered by FanDuel. Download the FanDuel Sportsbook app today and find thousands of ways to play. Please play responsibly 19 plus and physically located in Ontario. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious what he brings. I am Patrick King. I am quite curious because yeah. um, he was a sought after guy, as you would expect. But he but. doesn't have to be the guy. That's the thing. He can be a support cast guy. Like even in Detroit, like they've they've got their players, and I just don't see they throw them on a line with DeBrinket because they had magic, mm-hmm. you know, six years ago, five years ago. Like you, you got to slot where you're going to slot today, and Detroit's hanging around. What are yeah, they, they are. second place there or what? Are they, third place? Uh, I they're even check. third in the the it's still Boston, Florida, and then Detroit. Yeah, yeah. but they're a point up on the Leafs. The Leafs have a game in hand. Yeah, but man, it is. It's tight. It's I'm telling you. It is it's, like you know. You gotta, you gotta win games. Like yep. it, all year, you're gonna have to win games, and you can't have a stretch. Obviously, you would welcome a stretch of five wins in a row, but you can't have a stretch oh, of five. Oh, you have that in a row. garbage yep. stretch. It could it'll cost you. The only outliers are the Rangers and the Bruins. Like everyone, yeah. no one else, including Florida, Carolina. Like they, yeah. no one. Like Florida's been good. Florida's got one more point than Detroit. And two more than the Leafs, and the Leafs have two games in hand. Yeah. I guess that Florida's not a lock to make it at no. all. The Leafs are not a no, block to make it. Carolina, no. Dude, Nobody it's going to be a grinding, like, you talked about it, Hayes, where you have to have that massive chunk to get in, and I think that's what the Rangers and the Bruins have done. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't. It's, n- wow. nobody else seems to be wanting or, or having the L.A. Kings are doing Vegas. it. Nobody's Vegas. Nobody's going away. That's like, that's the thing. We talked about Washington and how Washington or – same amount of games as the Leafs, two points behind them. That's this right. was a team that looked like they were dead in the dead water in the at the start oh, of the year. They looked awful at the beginning and of the year. They were awful last night. You yeah. know? I like think they just, scratched Kuznetsov they last did night. They did last night. They did. He's been a healthy. Man, there's been some wild healthies in the league this year. <laughs> there is. I think teams, like it's the old long-term contract, I'll do whatever I want. Some teams have just said, the hell with you, man. Yeah. We're yeah. not watching it. Yeah. yeah. There's been some wild, wild healthy scratches. I was looking at the yeah. list last night. Like you said, Kuznetsov, Line A. Um, there's been a number of big names. A bunch of benchings and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, That's right. Johnny Crazy. Goudreau got benched. A bunch of them. In Philly, Huberto. obviously, Tort's been doing it. Huberto. All right. Thanks to everyone behind the scenes for helping out. We appreciate it, as always. And thank you for tuning in. TV, radio, podcast, web. We appreciate that. We're out of here. Enjoy your evenings. Enjoy the games tonight. We're back tomorrow at 4 p.m. We'll chat then.